I have created an animation cheat sheet which has step-by-step -step instructions to follow to create animation using the pose to pose workflow. If you haven't already, I strongly suggest you check out my last YouTube video which is an explainer on the pose to pose workflow. That video is more of a lecture which explains the concepts behind that workflow and this video is more of a demonstration video where you can watch me animate using that workflow and follow along step by step. We're going to be using the Squirtle Rig which is a nice simple character you can get from the Agora community site. For this quick exercise, there's not much planning or reference involved, we're just going to get straight in there and make some poses. We're also going to be working with step tangents the whole way so that none of our in-betweens are decided by the computer. Now remember, this workflow is trying to keep as close to traditional animation workflows of the past. So every pose we create in 3D is the equivalent of a drawing in 2D animation. This also means whenever we create a new pose, we are selecting all of the race controls and stamping that pose down on specific frames. Learning how to spline and use the graph editor can come later. Right now, we're just focusing on fundamental animation principles and how you can improve that by using this workflow. As we go through each of the steps of the workflow, we're just going to be referring back to that cheat sheet I made. I'm going to be using Autodesk Maya for this exercise, but everything we do here can be done in Blender. So Blender people don't run away, please. I need your views. Thank you. The only essential plugin we're going to be using is Tween Machine, which you can download for free. In Blender, you can just use Blender's breakdowner and it does the exact same thing. I'm also going to be using a picker for the character so I can quickly select controls. All that does is speed you up. You don't need one, but I'll give away this Squirtle picker that I made for free using Dream Wall Picker. So without further ado, let's hop into Maya and get this demo started. Let's go. So the very first thing we're going to do in our workflow is create some poses. You're basically viewing the camera view of your 3D model as just a drawing. Maybe in a future video, we'll do a proper deep dive into posing. But for now, there are some videos on my channel where I've done a live stream and I've, I've gone through the posing process with a student and pushed their poses. I've also got a couple of facial posing videos as well that you can check out to learn about posing the face. Over time, you'll naturally improve your eye and you'll get a better sense for posing. So don't overthink it for now. In this video, we're just going to focus on implementing and fully understanding the workflow I've been teaching. So here's the main poses I made. He's standing, looks to the side, kind of gets suspicious, and then maybe he sees something, he jumps up and goes into some Kung Fu stance. Now, these aren't the best poses in the world, and that's not the point of this exercise. It's just about repetition and practicing the workflow. Things that we're considering when we're making these poses is contrast between them. Um, so there's a few things I like to think about with contrast. So one of the major ones is the line of action through the body. So here we're kind of doing a, a C this way. If we go to the next pose, we're going this way, right? So our, we have a reversal between this pose and this pose. Let's look at the next pose when he jumps up. Um, we're going this way, so we get that contrast. Another thing I think about a lot is if you draw kind of a, a general cube or a square around your silhouette. So here, where we go from this shape, if I then draw the silhouette for this pose, what you're going to see is that he's kind of gotten smaller and wider, shorter and wider. Um, so much like our squash and stretch, we're somewhat maintaining volume. So that's another way of viewing contrast. We could even involve the tail in that, get wider during this part. Um, so let's just maybe try that out. So that gets a little bit wider, so it widens the silhouette even more than it actually is. Again, here we're kind of going from that short wide shape and then we're going into somewhat taller. Again, I could maybe involve this arm in there, but you don't want absolutely everything to do that, but it's subtle amounts of change. But these are things that you can look at to, to make sure you're getting enough contrast between your poses. Another thing I like to think about when doing these bigger pose to pose changes, I usually end up changing the weight that the foot's on. Here the foot, the weight is already on the screen right leg and then he goes down into it. But maybe during an anticipation or breakdown in here, we'll have him arc to the left. So we get that, that change of weight, that weight shift from one side to the other. These are all different things I'm thinking about when I'm doing my main poses, my main held golden poses. And that way we, we know that when we get into adding these breakdowns, adding things, there's enough contrast and shape change to make the motion appealing. So sometimes we wanna work within a pose. So that's what I mean by that is we're just looking, we're in this pose here, but we're just looking slightly to the side. Um, we still use the workflow to go in and out of this pose. It's just kind of a subtler move and we're not changing everything. So when we do these, I don't worry about all those things about contrast I just mentioned. I just worry about kind of delivering the story. So he looks and then he reacts and then you have the big pose change, right? So we still do our pose to pose workflow into the look, which, which you'll see in a second. It's just a smaller, subtler version um, instead of involving all the contrast. So going back to our cheat sheet, let's pull it up. The first step is creating our poses and making sure we have contrast between them. Sometimes when you're going between poses, you need to consider anticipation as another pose. If you're holding in an anticipation before you jump into a pose, then this hold again is just another pose. We just view it as another pose that we use the workflow in and out of. In this case, we're probably going to have an, a smaller anticipation pose between these two. So we can add that now. Cool. So for this anticipation, I've just got him kind of squishing in on himself before the jump. He puts his weight on the leg over here and everything's kind of getting wider and thinner again. So we're looking at 
if we were to draw a box around this guy, um, it's basically gotten shorter and wider um, to anticipate, and then we're going to be jumping and getting taller and thinner. Um, so it's another way we're viewing contrast. I'm also kind of pushing the line of action so we get a stronger C-shape before we reverse when we jump out. So these are a few things I'm thinking about for that contrast step. So now with that, we've kind of finished our first step. We've got our main poses and we've got our anticipations. Um, these are all going to be held poses, so we view them all as the exact same. We're just going to be using the workflow to work in and out of them. So we're going to be working through each of our pose-to-pose -pose moves separately. So we'll start with the first one here. So one thing that I'm always thinking about when I do these pose-to-pose -pose moves is whether I'm going to be animating them on 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s. I don't really go any more than that on 24 FPS. I usually view animating on 2s as a snappy move, animating on 3s as kind of a medium move, and animating on 4s is kind of a slow move. For, for a simple look to the side here, he's going to be standing there and then just look to the side. It can be relatively snappy. We'll just call it a medium move for now, so we'll go three frames up and we'll make our first breakdown. Again, when we're using Tween Machine, the more we bias our previous pose, the snappier we're gonna move through the middle. So for this move, I'm gonna make it say it's about medium. Um, we can stick it around here. So the first thing we need to consider when doing our first breakdown is we're kind of somewhat dragging everything because we're biasing the previous pose, but then we need to choose some things to lead. So in this case, I'm gonna use the eyes to lead and then the head can catch up and the body can catch up with that. So the eyes, I'm just gonna snap them over. So the eyes are leading. Um, and the head is kind of dragging behind, but the head is in a straight line now. So every time we use Tween Machine, it's gonna put everything in a straight line. So if you look at this intersecting point here, I can make it even bigger. You can see it's kind of moving in a straight line very slowly, but we have our spacing, but our arc is not here. So let's add in a slight arc so we can arc kind of under. We get this slight dip. Um, the body probably needs to be put in a very slight arc. I can use 2D pan zoom, um, get really close and see like, oh yeah, this is kind of moving in a straight line. We know that everything's going to be moving in a straight line when you use Tween Machine. So here, this is just going diagonally this way. So maybe we can add a tiny arc where we go to the side and come around this way. Same goes for rotation, but the rotation's so minuscule here. Look, it's not too much. I just need, I just grabbed it and nudged it a tiny bit down to put it in an arc. I'm just going to go through different controls and make sure that they have a slight amount of arc to them. But it's a very subtle move, so we're going to speed through this stage. One, two, three. So now we go three frames. And I'm going to ease in. Again, we're relatively snappy on this move, or relatively medium, I'd say, not snappy. Um, and then, again, the arc here is kind of broken, so we went under. Now it's kind of going over and then back down. So I'm just going to continue the arc we started here with our first breakdown kind of going under. So we're continuing that under arc. So I can go flick between these frames, and it doesn't really matter that I'm um, adjusting like previous frames when I'm making these arcs. We're not too worried about that. We can flick through and change things as we please. We, do, we don't need to stick to any decision. Um, you can be very loose with it. We've created our ease in and we've added some things to arcs, but one thing I forgot to do, which we definitely need to, this is our step three, is add something to drag. Um, so let's choose something to drag behind. I mean, the head was kind of dragging behind the arm, eyes, but maybe we can drag something extra even more. So maybe like this arm, which is tucking in a bit, maybe that could be dragged behind and we can make an arc as it gets dragged behind. So that just has a little bit further to go. And you have something leading and something kind of dragging, getting there a little bit later. I'll make this free frames. So these are all on free frames. As I say, I like to do kind of medium moves on threes, slow moves on fours, fast moves on twos, or really, really fast moves on ones. Um, and I like to keep them at consistent frame rates as a first pass. Then we can adjust the timing afterwards. Um, the reason you do that is so that when you flick between these keys, I know that this, the difference between each of these keys is the exact same. So when I flip between them, I can see how much things are moving and I don't have to account for how many frames it's moving that distance within. All I have to account for is the amount that's moving because I know it's consistent. If you work this way, then you can easily kind of track your spacing a lot easier rather than having to consider how many frames is also moving whilst tracking your spacing and making sure things are gaining speed and then slowing down in speed when they ease out and back in again. So that's our breakdowns one and two in our workflow. So now we can add a midpoint in. The midpoint um, is a step that I don't always do. Um, we're defining the fastest point of motion. We can do that if we're getting really high fidelity and on some moves where there's more contrast and you have more shape changes, then we're going to use it. For this one, I'm not too bothered. All that we're doing by adding the midpoint is adding extra detail to the middle of the movement, which in this move is a really simple move. The arc's kind of defined at this point. So we're going to skip past that for now. On, on further post poses, you'll see in a second, we'll be using this step. Um, so now we're just going to do eases on either side of the motion to, to cushion it and to add arcs and to settle everything. We can go three frames before and maybe add a slight ease out. So it's slightly easing out. Um, we can make sure that the head is arcing. Right now it's going in a straight line. So it's very tiny, but we're at a tiny arc to it. Cool. And I'm not too bothered about anything else. Everything else is so subtle on this move that we're just going to kind of speed past it. Um, maybe we can add an ease in or two um, around the same amount of 
bias that we were using before and make sure that here again, as soon as we add that ease in this middle point, it's going a straight line again. So we just nudge that out into arc and we can do the same for this arm, which was catching up. So maybe we can just nudge it. So it's kind of slightly in arc. I'm not too bothered about much else because it's a simple move, but there you go. We've created a pose to pose move there. The mouth's doing its own thing. We could put those corners in arc. We could go into lots of detail, but for now we'll, we'll skip past and we'll move on to the next pose to pose move. So we could also add a moving hold. Um, this is most important for when we're doing splined animation, because as soon as you hit spline, it's going to start blending into the next pose. So let's add a moving hold. So he looks and maybe for a few frames, so maybe until about here, we want it to hold in this pose. So we're going to add a final ease in and make sure that things are arcing. So here again, it's going to be going in a straight line, even though it's really tiny. I'll just add it into a slight arc. I'm not too bad about any of the other body parts, but that means if we were to hit spline on this section, so now with this moving hold, we kind of break down into this pose um, and we hold for this section and then we start to move into the next pose. If we didn't have that moving hold, we would do the breakdowns and we would already start to transition as soon as we get to this point. So we wouldn't have that hold at the end of the movement that we definitely want. So we'll go back to step. This exercise, we're just going to focus on step tangents. Now we have our first move figured out. Um, it was a bit of a subtle one, but all the principles are still there. It's all animated the exact same. Let's move on to our next pose to pose breakdown, um, breakdowns, which is between this pose and this pose. Let's start again. So we start this workflow again every time going between each of our poses. Obviously we've done step one already for everything, so we don't need to worry about that. So we're going to move on to step two here for our next pose to pose move, which we're going to be creating our first breakdown here, which is biasing pose A. Um, and we're going to choose something to lead during it. And we're going to add everything into arcs. That's the, all the steps. So we're going between this pose and this pose. So let's maybe make this one a bit snappier. Um, I'm going to work on twos for this one and I'm going to be pretty snappy with it. So I'm going to go 75% bias. Um, cool. So something to lead. I feel like the head can maybe lead. So we're going to kind of scoop under and get the head there. Um, and also the facial animation can probably lead. I can just use Twin Machine to kind of get it there. Maybe the mouth or something can be a bit slower than the rest of it. So I'm just using Twin Machine here to kind of get some things closer to where they're going to be pretty fast. Um, and maybe we can have the eyes kind of catch up a little bit here as well, but with the brows somewhat leading. Cool. So we've got a little bit of facial lead there. So we've chose what's leading. Now we can put everything into arc. So again, this is going to be going in a straight line. I think it could be cool to have um, an arc where we kind of go around, maybe over and around here. So we're getting over and around in that arc. Cool. And the rotation also needs to be put in an arc. So I'm going to nudge that around. Cool. So now we can move on to other body parts. Let's check the hand. So this hand's going in a straight line. Maybe we can add a slight arc to it going this way with the elbow leading. Maybe we can drag like a big part of this, like the hand as we're going. Cool. And maybe that hand's leading more than this hand. So maybe this hand can go do an over arc. So they're kind of doing opposites, which is fun. Get a little bit of breakup. Maybe we can lead by translating the head down a little bit. So it kind of is getting there a bit faster. Oops. And the tail, maybe we can drag the tip of the tail whilst the bottom of the tail is kind of leading. So I am doing lead and follow at the same time here. Um, but the main, everything's going to be somewhat following because we're biasing the previous pose. So the main important step on this is to do follow, but it is a lie to so say you just do follow on the first breakdown. You do both. Cool. So we got our first breakdown there. We can look back at the cheat sheet. Obviously, the next thing we're going to move on to is our second breakdown. So again, we make a decision about how fast we're kind of biasing it into the pose, so how snappy that middle of the movement's, movement's going to be. Um, and then we need to focus on things that are dragging behind and arcs once again. Let's go two frames up. Let's make an ease in. Maybe it would be fun to have um, the arc kind of go under at this point. So it's a real snappy move. We kind of go over and then we go under. We're kind of arcing around this way. I want it to be subtle, of course. Um, and let's add that kind of drag behind with the wire that we were started on the previous pose. Maybe we can drag the body as well. Cool. The foot's kind of getting there slowly, but maybe we can delay the tit toes. So kind of like the heel leads it and the toes get there a little bit later. So adding some lead and follow. Uh, the head was leading before, so we can continue that lead. We'll kind of have it overshoot under and then scoop up. Maybe we can even scale the head a little bit to overshoot it. Maybe we can overshoot the face a little bit. So let's get the face most of the way there. But maybe we can overshoot by having the jaw close and then it can open on the open again. And maybe we can have the eyes squint a little bit more. So they open on the next pose. Maybe we can have the eyebrows kind of overshoot by coming down further and kind of compressing in further as well. 
and maybe we can add a little bit of that shape change early into that angry brow shape. Just a little kind of push past it and then get into the next one. Cool. Um, so let's also continue our arcs on the arms. This one was kind of arcing outwards, so we can continue that. Um, and that one was kind of leading the other one as well. Maybe we can get that shoulder up nice and high so the shoulder's kind of leading it. And then delay, maybe delay like the forearm as we do this. So the forearm has more further to go. This one we we're kind of arcing over the top, so we can continue that arcing over the top before it gets into that final pose. Boom, boom. I'm not really looking at the rotation here. I'm just looking at the hands when I do the FK arms. I find that easier to track. Cool. And the tail, maybe we can continue to drag behind the top of the tail whilst the bottom of the tail kind of gets to its final position. Cool. So we've created this very snappy move between our poses here. Um, I can put this all on twos. But now we need to move on to the next step, which is the midpoint pose. So we're going to be defining the fastest point of the motion. Um, so I'm going to add a pose between our breakdown one and breakdown two. So this will be on ones at this point. Maybe we'll play around with that timing if we need to. And we're just going to continue our arcs and our spacing um, for all of these parts. So we've already defined what's leading and following. Um, let's just chuck it around the middle, which is where it needs to be. Um, and let's continue these arcs. So this arm's arcing around. I, there's no particular order to what I want to do with this. It's probably best to do like the center of gravity first, just because that moves the most things. Um, but you can get away with just moving whatever, really. It's just about feeling it out. So maybe at this point the foot kind of arcs over and then it can stamp down. Cool. Um, and let's continue the arcs for the other arm, for example, for this part. The shoulder's kind of leading up. Cool. This middle part, we can lead the head a bit more during that part. Boom. Cool. Cool. So don't need to worry too much about everything. A lot of it's going to be covered by Twee Machine, and we've already defined a lot of the arcs here, so. Cool. So now we can move on to our next step, which is adding eases. So the more eases we add, the more info we can add on the how we get out of a pose and how we get into a pose. Whoops, accidentally moved the camera there. I'm going to lock it as well, so I don't accidentally do that again. So let's do our first ease out. We're relatively snappy here. I remember we used 75%, so we can kind of do that as well. We can vary the percentages a little bit, but we want to keep them relatively similar so that the spacing is progressive. So I'm just putting things in arc, making sure that the things that are leading are leading and the things that are dragging are dragging. So maybe I'll do an arc that starts this way and then it goes around that way for this arm. Maybe I'll do an arc that comes inwards and then goes around for this arm. Oops, wrong frame. This frame's the one we need to do it with. Maybe we can drag the tail a little bit during this part and lead with this a little bit more. So I don't really think we need... It's a snappy move. I don't really think we need more ease-ins at this point. We can just add... Sorry, we don't need more ease-outs. We can just add more ease-ins. So we're back on twos. And we're kind of using 75% here. Maybe we'll make it a little bit softer at this point and do 60. Cool. And now everything's in a straight line again, as per usual. So once again, we're going to continue the arcs we've established. Bum, bum, bum. Maybe the rotation can overshoot on this frame underneath. So the arc of the rotation is going under and then back around. And the head. Maybe we can add a wider arc on the head here for a little bit of interest and then have it come around and settle back in. Maybe this frame, we can have the arms kind of overshoot up and then come back and settle. Cool. And this one, maybe you can kind of get around in that arc that we've already been creating. Maybe overshoot a little bit. And not too bothered about everything else. I can add detail to everything else, but you know, this is just a demo. So we're not going to go super polishy with every single piece. Um, the tail. Let's work on that a little bit. So the tail was dragging through here. And maybe we can have it start kind of overshoot at this point and sell. Uh, we'll keep going. Add more breakdowns. Add more eases. Sorry, I should say eases. Everything goes in a straight line. Once we hit Twin Machine, we nudge everything into arc. So the head nudged into arc. The body here. Noise use two pan zoom.
making sure look the spacing is getting closer to the final pose. Look, but we're still continuing that arc. And I know that everything's going to be going in a straight line, so I can very easily just nudge it and know that it's going to be going the correct way. Maybe we can add a bit of overlap where the arm straightens a little bit and then catches back up. And we'll check the arc on this arm. I'm not sure if I did it. It kind of looks a bit straight here, so I'm just going to have it go under and then back around. So again, we can probably add another ease, like one final ease here. So I'll go two frames up again. Add an ease. Whoops, wrong frame. And these in here. Again, it's subtle, but everything's going to be in a straight line. Somewhat diminishing returns, cleaning up things the closer to the ease, the final pose that we get, but it's good practice. Just adding arcs to everything. Slight nudge, slight nudge of the rotation curve there. Here again, we can check this is going to be between these frames going in a straight line. So I can just nudge it over so it kind of finishes that arc in a little overshoot. So we got our first two moves here. Whoops. We could add a moving hold, but I'm not actually going to for this move because I think I'm going to move straight into the next thing by the end of these eases. We're going to start breaking down into the next pose. So we're not too bothered about moving holds. Once again, once we finish a workflow into the next pose, we do the workflow again into the following pose. So we go back up to the top here. We've already made our poses, which is gonna work on step two onwards. So we're gonna be making our breakdowns once again. Here I've decided that like, I'm going to make the anticipation pretty instant after we get into this pose, I think. So by the end of this, this is about as much hold as I want. So I don't actually need to add a moving hold pose. I'm just gonna break down further into the next move. So maybe we can vary this. So we did this one on twos and we made it very snappy by having it 75% each way. So maybe for this anticipation, we can be a bit slower. We can go to kind of a medium speed, maybe do threes. We can kind of bias kind of a medium amount here. Cool. So that's our first breakdown. Uh, we need to choose something to lead. So maybe the head during this part. So whilst we're still easing in, can already start to get to the next pose. So it can already begin its arc to the next pose during the easing of the previous motion. So I like to call that continuous action. Um, it's the step I've mentioned here, continuous action. So it's when, if you have two pose to pose moves close enough to each other in time, you can have things still settling in one pose while something starts to lead out into the next pose. Um, so here I've had it where the head is starting to lead into this next pose whilst we're still easing into all the other parts the previous pose. And that way you kind of blur the lines between your pose to pose moves and it makes things feel more organic and more interesting. So let's keep working on this. So we chose the head to lead. Um, we'll put everything else in arc. So here, kind of this arc was finishing and now we're kind of coming, easing out. So I'm just gonna continue that arc. Um, again, I'm using 2D pan zoom. I'm just tracking that little square there. Um, maybe we can continue this arm in for this anticipation. Cool. Um, got the rotation arc in here, maybe a little bit under and the face I feel like is a bit linear right now so maybe we can delay the face or we could even lead with the face so maybe by this point we're somewhat getting there and maybe the frame before we can do a little bit of continuous action where we start to ease out into that as well very sharply um, so maybe we can have the eyes lead I'm just going to grab the eyes and have the eyes kind of get there already but maybe the mouth for example could be a bit more delayed during this first breakdown. And then the mouth can catch up. Um, I don't think I put this back arm in arc either. So let's check that. Cool. So now we've created our first breakdown. So let's make our second breakdown. Again, working on threes. One, two, three. Going to move this two more frames up. So this is on freeze. And we're going to add an ease in. Um, somewhat soft ease in. Uh, we did 40% here. So we're kind of Again, varying that amount of bias between our different pose to pose moves. Maybe we can have his arc overshoot a little bit. Tiny bit of continuous action here. So I flick between my poses and, you know, as we're kind of coming out of this pose, I can start to add a bit of an ease out on different parts of the body so that different things start to ease out at different times. That's something to always pay attention to. And I put the rest of it into, into arc as well for the second breakdown. 
So we're not always just working on one key at once. We're flicking between our keys and working on a bunch of things at once. Cool. So let's figure out this arc. Maybe we can have this kind of arc inwards a little bit more and then come out. Cool. This guy is kind of linearly coming up at the moment. So I want to add some bit of interest to it on this second breakdown. We have the shoulder lead. The head arc, not focused on too much. So maybe we can have it just kind of come in down in here. So maybe we can have it kind of arc around this way a little bit more. So it has a little bit further to go. So we've got our two breakdowns. Again, we can move on to our post post sheet and we can look at the next step, which is adding a midpoint which again is just kind of continuing our arcs and spacing, but we're going to add it in between our breakdown one here and our breakdown two. So how we're getting out of this pose and how we're getting into this pose. And we're going to add it in here, but there's three frames. So it's a bit awkward to find. Uh, you can kind of just choose one side to bias. So here I'm going to bias this side and make sure look because I'm doing that, I'm going to bias a little bit to the previous pose. Um, since there is an exact amount of frames there to add this midpoint, I'm just going to add it in. Um, cool. We can define this arc a little bit more. Maybe we can overshoot things like the eyebrows by this point. So I'll just grab them, and add a little bit more compression to it before we get to this pose. Uh, I'm going to make sure that during that mid pose, we're still in an arc in the main body. So I'm just going to continue it around and under this way. Again, I've got to remember that it's a one frame, so. Okay, I want to add a bit more contrast in here. So I'm going to use the forearms. When I start to ease out, I'm going to add a little bit of forearm so that the forearms can catch up for this bit here. A little bit jittery. So let's pull it back. Same on this one. Continue the forearms so that they have a little bit further to go as we come into our final pose there, our next pose. Cool. Um, so we've added our two main breakdowns. Maybe we can add one more ease on this side. Continue the arc. Everything goes in a straight line again when we use Twin Machine, so we just nudge it slightly into arc. Straight line again in here. So I'm just going to nudge it under. So we get that arc. Cool, so we've now done three pose to pose moves in total. We've done our little look to the side, our drop down reaction, and then our drop into an anticipation. We can kind of vary our workflow a little bit and we can add a very sharp ease out. So let's do, let's work on twos maybe for this one. Let's add a really sharp ease out for this first part. I'm going to keep the legs on the floor. And I'm going to lead with the, I'm not going to lead with the head this time. I'm going to try and vary it so we don't always lead with the same thing. So I'll continue the head arc settling from the previous pose to pose move. But I really want to lead with the arms, I think, here. So the arms, I'm going to have them swing in. Um, so this one's going to be swinging around. Maybe we can even delay the, the forearm here as well. And the hand. Maybe use the bembos here to get the elbow to kind of lead a bit more. Cool. Do a little bit of leading with this arm as well. By coming down. So it's going to be pushing him up as he kind of flies up. Cool. Maybe we can even delay the head as the body starts to come up. I don't want it to look like it's jeering though. So something like that. Um, let's keep this leg on the ground. And arc wise, I'm going to arc it around again. We're pushing up this leg. So I'm just going to arc it onto this leg and then we'll start to push off. Put this in arc. Boom, boom, boom. So that's our first breakdown we kind of defined there. 
Things are in arc, things are spacing. So we had a really tight ease out. It was really close. But now we're going to have a softer ease in here. So you can vary this. Um, just going to grab the IKs so I can put everything in arc. Boom, boom. So we're kind of easing in. And I want my foot to be pushing off here. So I'm going to delay my foot. I can kind of be pushing off the toe. So I'm just going to translate it so it kind of lines up. So it looks like it's pushing off the toe there. Um, it's getting a little bit stretched and warped, but that's fine. We'll figure that out. This one is kind of pushing off as well. So we can have those both delaying as everything else is coming up. So the head was somewhat delayed as well. So I can kind of droop that down. I have that. Maybe we can have this arcing under and then it can come around as we work into this pose. Um, and let's have this arm arc continue inwards. Maybe we can drop it down as it comes around. And this arm arc we can continue inwards as well. Before we get to this kind of point uh -huh, where it kind of arcs under and around. Cool. The forearm was getting pretty delayed before, so we can add a bit more delay. And just make sure that when we do eases, we define this arc a little bit more. Um, define it a bunch now. It's a very short hop. I kind of want to make it <laughs> higher. So I'm just going to grab this frame and make it higher and this frame and make it higher. Cool. Um, so we have our breakdown one, our breakdown two into this pose. Um, so let's put this on a two as well. I'm just going to grab it, move it over. And I don't necessarily know how much hang time we want to add to this, but we can add some eases. So I don't think we're going to ease in because we're kind of snapping. We're not going to ease out, sorry. We're kind of doing a really snappy move, so we're not going to add as many ease outs. We're going to add none, in fact, but we can ease in. So let's add an ease in here. Again, everything's going to be going in a straight line between poses, so we can grab all this stuff, kind of arc it. Make sure things are arcing. Kind of want this foot to push off and kind of get behind. So maybe this pose wasn't right. Um, I just want to get to a point where We're kind of anticipating the kick somewhat. And this leg, maybe we can delay the toes a bit and we can have it arc inwards and then start to come out before it plants here. Cool. Now we can look at the arms. This arm's arcing in so we can continue that arc. We can continue the elbow leading before the hand gets there. This one was arcing in. So we can continue that arcing in. The head was going under, so now it's in a straight line. We're going to continue that arc. Cool. Tail's not really doing much, but we're not too bothered about that for now. Cool. So you can see we're kind of working into this up pose, and then we're going to work into our next pose, which is this down here. So I don't think I'm going to add any more ease-ins. We're just going to continue by... Maybe we'll do the next move on. We probably want it to be similar, so we'll keep on twos because um, you kind of use, you have to account for physics at this point. So we're going to use our make our first breakdown. So I kind of choose choose a value here. Kind of want it to be continuously moving, so not ridiculously snappy, but still biasing our first pose. Maybe we can have the foot lead as it comes down. Maybe we can get this up and around a little bit sooner. Another foot lead, but the toe is kind of dragging behind it um, for the stomp. Whilst this leg starts to get into its kind of kicking anticipation part that we want. Maybe the body needs to be an arc because it was in a straight line. So I'm kind of moving it over a little bit. Cool. The arms. Definitely want the arms to be delayed till after we land. So I'm going to keep this up. And this one I'm going to keep out wide, just continuing the arc we made before. The head. I think I'm going to start adding a bit of texture here. So by that, I'm just going to start having it shaking as it comes down. So I'm going to have it go to the side here. And the tail, I'm going to make sure that still silhouette is still really clear. And we can start to have that kind of breaking down. And it's going to swing under, I guess. So maybe we can start that a frame earlier as well so it doesn't feel super unmotivated.
Cool. So we made our ease out here. We're kind of delaying the face as well. That's something I wanted to do. Just delay the face. So now we can make our second breakdown and work on twos. Maybe we'll add a midpoint in the middle here, but we'll just make a second breakdown here. The leg was leading. So we'll get the leg there. Kind of want to get that leg kick out. Maybe even scale the foot so it's like nice and snappy. Bomb, bomb. Maybe at this point the arm's still delayed because the arm was pretty delayed before. Let's have that coming down still. Push the arc a little bit here. Even use the fingers to help accentuate the kind of arc and the shape that we're going in. Get a little bit of a smear by doing that. And here maybe we can have that arm still delayed coming around. Maybe I can even overshoot already by this point. Definitely going to need a midpoint pose in here. We'll add in extra keys to get that space. Here we were doing that head shake, so we can add that head shake in. So we're going left and then right, and then straighten it up again. And I think maybe we'll keep the face delayed. And we haven't looked at the tail yet, so let's figure out the tail. Tail's arcing under still. Um... Somewhat delayed from the body. Can't see it too much. Don't want it to intersect the floor too much from camera view, but this will do for now. Maybe we can delay the chest and head a tiny bit on the back where we were coming from. Cool. So that's our breakdown two. So we'll move on to the next step, which we know is the midpoint. So we can add in a breakdown in the middle here where maybe the legs get in there. Toes can still be delayed a little bit. Maybe we get that nice big anticipation with the leg here before it snaps out. Make sure everything else is in arc still. Just flipping through, making sure things are arcing. Second arc under. Maybe we can delay the head squash a little bit here, delay it here, and then we could end up doing an overshoot when we get to this point. Cool, so we were working on twos. Um, we just added the midpoint here on a one. Oh yeah, we were going back and forth with the head. Maybe we'll just make sure that that's arcing over as we do that. Cool, um, and now we can add some eases as we land. Cool, so let's go on twos. We're easing in, we can overshoot. Like we were saying we were overshooting, we can overshoot on this one, so we go down, continue that arc. Cool, that leg is kind of finished its kick, but maybe we can continue its arc over before it settles down. This arm I want to really snap into, so we're going to use Swing Machine to get it there. Maybe we can even scale up some stuff. Fingers even. Just a little bit. Maybe even overshoot that hand forward so we get that nice snap. Boom, boom. Cool. This one's arcing under, so we'll continue this arc. The head. Maybe start to open up, right? So... Maybe we can continue that shake that we were adding before. Maybe we can get that face really easing in at this point. And then we'll be able to overshoot that on the next frame. And the tail will continue its arc under as it kind of comes around and settles. Not too bothered about the intersections, it's just a practice. So we just add more eases to kind of resolve that motion and add all the arcs in so that everything kind of gets to its final positioning, right? So let's go back to twos. Maybe we continue the shake slightly and we can have it kind of overshoot. We can have maybe the face can overshoot a little bit. So let's have the mouth open. Don't want that tongue to get completely lost. 
and maybe we can have the face open more. The top eyelids are already all the way open, but we can open up the bottom eyelids. Maybe we can have that on this frame and then they can sell back. And same for the brows. So I don't mind flicking between my frames and having things happen slightly different timings. And maybe with this open on this frame, we can get that overshoot stretch. And on this frame, we can get that overshoot stretch on the jaw. Cool. Let's keep the arcs going. So this hand is kind of in a straight line here. Just maybe we can have it arc around as it settles. This arm's going to be in a straight line. So we just continue that arc around here. This leg is going to be somewhat straight. So we can continue its arc as it settles. And the tail is somewhat just easing in here. So maybe we can continue the little bit of drag and settle that's going on on there and the arc. Cool. Make sure that everything's arcing nicely. Feels like it is. I didn't look at the weight yet. So let's do that. That's just going straight up here. So we'll continue that around. Maybe too much. Let's use 2D pan zoom. Sometimes you need to just to be able to refine really small amounts of stuff. I'm just going to continue that arc around there. Cool. So we definitely just need more eases in. You can see how we got all this nice breakup from all these different parts settling at different times. Cool. So let's continue the head arc here. It's probably going to be going straight between these two. So we'll just add that arc in. Um, the weight. Let's zoom in. Going to be going in a straight line for our final ease. Every time we use Twin Machine, it puts everything in a straight line, right? So we'll just continue that arc around. Also, continue our arc on the rotation, which I've not been paying too much attention to, but let's just make sure that that's somewhat settling. So we were coming up this way, we we're arcing over, and then we kind of hit and arc under when we hit. Cool. Tail. Maybe we can do a little. Overshoot at this point, get past its final pose. One axis, what's the other axis catching up? Cool. We can check things like the foot here, it's going to be going in a straight line, so we just put that into an arc. Arm's going to be going in a straight line here, so I'll just add a slight arc to it. Straight line, let's add a slight nudge it inwards so it kind of arcs in towards us and back out again. Cool. We did the head already. We did the body, we didn't do this back arm, so we can have that back arm. Maybe at this point it can overshoot forward before coming back, so it kind of continues that arc around. Let's maybe focus on the squash and stretch of the head. So I have a squash stretch on this frame, and then it kind of eases back in and settles. Cool. Cool, so let's add a couple more ease ins. We just continue all of our arcs, make sure everything resolves properly. So at this point, this leg's kind of arced back in this way and that's going back to its cells. So I can just finish that. Make sure that it's slowing down so the spacing is slowing down properly. So add a little bit of, let's do the weight. So again, kind of going to be in a straight line here so I can just nudge it up. Sometimes I like to hold Alt and use the keyboard keys and that kind of nudges things. So I can just nudge this to make sure that the arc is continuing over. Cool. And the rotation as well. Let's have a look at it. Arcs under here. Maybe we can have it kind of arc so it continues that arc around a little bit. So maybe it'd be fun if we add a little bit more interest to the jaw here. So we have this big open and then we sell back. So maybe by this frame, we kind of overshoot a little bit. It kind of overshoots back on itself and then settles back. Cool. Maybe we could even add a little bit of interest by having the eyes overshoot in scale when we get to this point. I can't even see where the scale controller is. It's all the way over here. So maybe we could have the eyes overshoot in scale and then, you know, they settle back over these frames. So I can have it ease in over these frames. Just use the machine to get it there. Maybe I could track the head a little bit more. So have it kind of have its down here and then it can sell. If I just grab the translates and then use the eases here, I can just make sure that it eases in at the end. Check the arc on it. I'm kind of going in a straight line here. So I'm just going to continue this arc around. Arcs around into our final pose here. 
yeah, so all we need to do now is just add more eases. Things are kind of getting really still at this point, so maybe this could just serve as our moving hold. We just stick it on frame 90 here. We'll make the animation 90 frames. And let's take a look at it. Cool. So this is how far I'm going to go. Um, all of this is about is practice. It's just about repetition, practicing that workflow, all those steps, finding different and interesting ways to break up things with lead and follow, so that things are arriving in the final pose or leaving the current pose at different times and arriving at the current pose at different times by using our breakdowns. But yeah, that's that's kind of it. So here's a play blast of the final result. I just added a tiny bit of camera movement to keep him framed up nicely. I hope you guys found this useful and it gives more clarity and gives more framing to the previous video I made. You can also check out my Ko-Fi page if you want me to be your animation mentor and to give in-depth video reviews on your animation work. Make sure to check out my other videos and like and subscribe, support the channel. And uh, hopefully there'll be some more videos coming up soon. Thanks again. See you next time.